my mind as you travel down life's highway of the things and that's just to show you that you come upon some of the destructions that you come up against some of the worldly things that seem and that to be a roadblock for you but aren't you thankful that we have one that we can go to that'll move them destructions out of your way that either we'll move them scoot them over but some way somehow you'll have your round or through or over and and i'm thankful don that we got one that we can go to and that time that we run up on them instructions if you have your bibles like the fall of tonight we're going over to the 122nd psalm and that, it may read the first two verses of it but the first verse i, I really want you to pay close attention to now david was talking here and, and david had done some things up to this and and had got back out into the world. And you know the story of, of, of him and Bathsheba, how, how he sent and that her husband out to the battlefield. In other words, wanting him, Brother Don, and that to get killed where he didn't have to face of the things that he had done with his wife. He didn't want anybody to know, so he, he thought he had it done in secret. My friend, how many things have you done down along life's highway that you thought you've done in secret? You can hide it from me. You can hide it from the church. You can hide it from the deacons. But the Bible said what is done in silence will be shouted from the rooftop. So I'm, I'm you know, by that, my friend, I'm telling you this. Anything you do that you do in secret, you you try to, to do it by hide it. God already knows you've done it. And if God knows it, it ain't none of our business anyway. You the He's the one you're going to stand before one day after a while. And he's going to say, hey, paraphrasing this, he's going to say, hey, you remember so and so? You remember this day, this time? And I believe, Brother Don, each time that you sin and come short, once you become a child of God, once your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I believe then from that time to the time you're called home, you're going to be judged by the 66 books of that Bible. That's right. It's going to be brought to your remembrance yeah. each time that you fail down along life's highway. It's going to be brought, and I don't think you're going to stand there and say, well, let me see it. I believe you're going to remember right then the time that he's yeah. talking about. But now David here, you know, David had 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 done the affair with the Sheba there through the natural, through the sin, lust of human nature. And you know, she, she bare forth a son there. But David didn't get to keep him. The Lord took him. His firstborn. Well, preacher, why did he take him? He got his attention, Sister Charlotte. That's when David made the statement. He said, I can't bring him back. He said, but I can go to him. So that's when David began to realize what David had done. Then after that was when David got down on his knees and he said, Lord, forgive me, return unto me the joy. Now a lot of people get this wrong. A lot of people said, return unto me the joy of my salvation. That ain't what David asked. David said, Lord, return unto me the joy of thy salvation. Yeah. Within ourselves, we have no salvation, my friend. We just sinners saved by the grace of God. That God seen fit, that hung on that cross like the message this morning, not bringing back a message, but for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. No greater love could have been given than him give his firstborn. Him give Murray's firstborn. Throughout the 66 books of the Bible, it don't tell me nowhere in the studying of God's word that there was another woman conceived a child through the Spirit after Christ. If you know of one, you let me know. I want to read it. But after, after Christ was born, there wasn't there another child that was conceived by spirit. But David here now, after David got this straightened out, the first 122nd Psalm, the first verse says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. My friend, do, do you get happiness? Do you get pleasure out of going into God's house? Mm -hmm. Do you get happiness? Do you get comfort when you're around God's people? Yeah. I mean, true God's people now. I, I ain't talking about these that's been handed counterfeits. I ain't talking about these that's 
a child of God on Sunday and on Wednesday and never bar room and honky tonk Monday through Saturday. I'm not talking about them, Don. I'm a talking about them, boys. I'm a telling you, them that live that way, they're making a mockery out of God. That's what they're doing. What does God say about that? He's not going to be mocked. The only time they got by with mocking Christ was the day that he hung on the cross. They mocked him then. They scorned him. They kicked him. They punched him. They sliced him. They spit on him. But what did he say? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He loved us when we were yet still sinners. It all started there in the Garden of Eden. When God formed Adam and Eve, he said, Now all this is yours. All the beauties is yours. Do not touch that one fruit on that tree. Do not. But out of human, out of nature, what happened? Everybody blames it on Eve. Honey, it was just much Adam's fault it was Eve. You can't blame it all on the woman. But when Eve went over and took that fruit, I believe it tasted good to her, Don. If it hadn't, she wouldn't offer to Adam. If it had a bitter taste, Sister Shirley, she wouldn't offer it. She wouldn't want it Adam to partake of. I believe it was a sweet fruit. By saying that, I want to say this. Satan himself shows you things, the bright side of things, right. with a sweetness. Yeah, right. The reason he does that to get you to step aside. Yeah. Get off of that straight and narrow way. Step into that broad way. Sure. If you take a space that's two foot or one foot wide, it's kind of hard to stay on that, that yeah. one foot wide path than it is to stay on a six-foot wide path. you got more room to bobble there. Yeah. But once you step out, he's got you then. He don't right. show you the other side of that. Right. Why should he? Well, preacher, shouldn't he show it? No, because he's got you right where he wants you. Yeah. That's why the Bible says straight is the way. But broad is the way to destruction. Yeah. Yeah, it's a wide path, Sister Shirley. Why? I believe God knowed it would be that way when he formed it. When he hung there on the cross, you go back to just customs, and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to David in a minute. You, you go back to I, the last supper that they had before Christ was crucified. Jewish customs was this. You sat down at a table to eat. There was a plate set in front of you. There was silver wire. They were a glass. They were a napkin give to you. When you finished eating, if you was not coming back to that plate, you wanted your napkin up and just dropped it. If they folded that napkin, Sister Shirley, and laid it back, that meant they was returning back to that seat. They wasn't through. Mm -hmm. When they went to the, the tomb on the third day, the stone was rolled away. Yeah. It had moved. The grave clothes, the Bible says, was there wrinkled. But what was laying at the head of the tomb? Huh? It was that napkin, wasn't it? And it was folded. That was another sign unto them that went to that tomb seeking him that morning that he was returning. He was coming back just like he told them. And my friend, if God tells he's coming, he's He's still coming back, Don. Mm -hmm. Ready or not, God is coming. Right. Mm -hmm. He has given us every opportunity that's, right. that has given unto man to change our ways. Yeah. You say, preacher, well, I, I can't the way the world is. Honey, us Christians with not enough backbone to stand is the reason the world's in the shape that's it's right. in today. Yeah. It, it ain't the sinners. It ain't the politicians. It's us as God's people. We sat down. Mm -hmm. We give up. And not got the backbone to stand and yeah. say, I'm a Christian. Amen. So in other words, what they've done, they have pushed Christianity out, yeah. and they're going to have what they want. Satan mm -hmm. is going from day to day seeking yeah. whom, he had, whom he may devour. Yeah. So my friend, let me ask you, how is your life with Christ? I know how mine is. Mm -hmm. I can't stand, Sister Shirley, an answer for you. Right. Only you can. Michelle, I can't stand an answer for you. I can see your daily walk. But how is your life with him? How yeah. is that a bowl? Is he still as strong as he was? 
or are you like David? Have you kind of drifted off a little bit and in misery trying to hide what God already knows? But as David here, he said, wasn't he glad? He said, let's go unto the house of God. And I'll, I'll, I'll read on this a little bit further. I don't know really where the Lord's going with this. I'm just following him. He said, Her feet shall stand within the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment and the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace, O Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within the, uh, thy walls of, of prosperity within thy palaces. For my brother and, and, and companion say, I will now say, Peace be within thee because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will see thy good. He's telling them here, he said, Now I'm, I have went place to place. A seeking comfort. But Sister Shirley, the only place you'll find comfort is in the house of God. The only place you're going to find comfort is that down on your knees and at that altar and that talking to God. He is the comforter. He is the one that said, if I go, I'll send you another comforter. What did he send to the comforter? His spirit. We have to walk through the Spirit. Right. David and them walk with Christ just like we walk together down here. But don't we can't do that. We have to walk by Spirit. We have to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. You can have the faith. But the Bible says faith without works are dead. Yeah. Works without faith are dead. So it's up to us as Christian people. If you have truth, God called child of God that has really accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. <clears throat> then these people you see every day that's out here running around doing this, doing that, you're going to be a peculiar person to them. Right. What do you mean, preacher? I've, I've known them all their life. They've known me all their life. But don't they difference, Larry? When you accept Christ, there's a change. If the change is not there, you better do some searching, honey. Right. You better go back and say, Lord, I'm still liking something. Yeah. Right. But what are you liking if you go back? You're liking repenting. You're yeah. liking giving it all and that to God. Yeah. You can't go down and that to the altar and say, now, Lord, I, come, I, I bring this to you. I want you to handle this, Lord. I'll, I want you to uh, be with my family. I want you to draw my kids in. Lord, it's in your hands. Amen. Get right up from it and say, well, what? No, no, wait a minute, Lord. I'll take this part back with me. I can handle this on my own. Yeah. That's why your kids are not in church. That is why the world is in the shape it's in. We left God outside. Yeah, right. we, we told him, Lord, you stand right here. If we need you, we'll come back and get you. That's right. But there's a change of coming. Mm -hmm. When that last call goes out, right. I believe when the last altar call goes out, when the last invitation goes yep. out, he's going to say, son, go get my children. I've given them long enough now. Yeah. They fought the battle. They stood the test of time. They've run the race. Now, son, go get them. Yeah. It, it's time for the bride to come. <clears throat> if God comes back tonight, how do you stand with him? Do you stand like David stood there? You know, no doubt when David went out there to face the giant, it had to be the Spirit of God with him. It had to be. It had to be. But now there's something funny about that. If you'll read that, the Bible says David went down to the brook <coughs> and he picked up seven stones. There was one giant. Now follow me close here. You study the scripture. The giant had six brothers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now let's follow it a little bit closer to that. 
when he reached and got them seven stones. Mm-hmm. Or five stones. There's five stones. Mm-hmm. <coughs> How many letters is in the word grace? Huh? So David went by grace yeah. to get them five stones. But the reason he got the five stones, he knew it wouldn't take but one for the giant. But he knew them, them other four brothers were standing right there. So David stepped out. After that, you know when they were. And, and, and that looking for a king. Well, David was down there in the field with the sheep. David was a shepherd at that time. And, and they come looking for one to be a king. They said, well, what about this? What about that? The old king that was king then said, well, no, wait a minute. said, where's that little short shepherd boy? Uh-huh. <coughs> Go bring him to me. Well, preacher, why did he want that little short shepherd boy? He was little in stature, mm-hmm. but he was strong in, that, in faith. Yeah. He was strong. He was planted in that in the Word of God, yeah. where we need to be planted, mm-hmm. where we need to spend our time. Our spare time we get through the day. Hey, read the Bible. The the Bible says, "Search the Scriptures. Show yourself approved." Right. If we never open it, you'll never understand it. Right. But my friend, let me go one step <laughs> further than that. If you never accept the author, you'll never understand it either. Right. It's just going to be a book. So this begot that, that begot this. Mm-hmm. But if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and then when you sit down with that book and you open it, you close your eyes and you say, Lord, reveal things to me. Yeah. Lord, help me understand. The Bible says, man, like a knowledge, let him ask. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you this you better be careful what you ask for. Because now God will give it to you, mm-hmm. He will. But will you use it when he gives it to you? What are you going to do with it? Many people, it's like talents. I would give anything if I could play, play a piano like Harry one against three. I would. I don't think it's meant for me to play like y'all. It ain't meant for y'all to play like me. That's why we all play together. Yeah. That's why we learn from each other. If everybody played like Don, why would they be all piano players? They wouldn't be but one. If everybody preached like so and so over there, God wouldn't have but one preacher. So He calls us all. He puts us in the unity of His Spirit to learn from each other, to follow, to help each other. Yeah. It ain't our place as, as a true child of God to down somebody. We need to uplift. We need to. I didn't say brag now. And we don't need to be prideful. But we need to show the love that God showed for us. As David here, from from this chapter on on through, you'll see. (coughs) Each chapter, each verse, he got a little stronger, Sister Shirley. He got a little more planted, a little more bolder. And then, Things done some changing for David. My friend, it looks the same for you. You have to be willing and wanting. But most of all, the Lord has to be a draw. Yeah, that's right. If the drawing spirit ain't there, if the conviction power ain't there, there's no way that you can be saved. That's right. There ain't a doubt in my mind. I asked everybody in here tonight their child of God. I hope and pray so. All I can do is look on the outside, Sister Shirley. I can yes. look on the inside. Like David here. All David could do. David had run just as far as David could run. But David realized laying there what he had done. It didn't only shame him, but it shamed God. Yeah. That's what brought David back to repentance. My friend, that's what will bring us back to repentance. When we get where we think we're above God, we're headed for trouble. That's right. There'll be trouble on every hand.
But I'm thankful, just like the old song said, a third victory in that man Jesus. Yeah. We can win things down here, sure we can. But this is mortal things. Don, the things we win down here, we can't take with us. We came into this world with nothing. The same shall we leave here. Yeah. But we can leave it with a hope and the testimony. Sister Shirley, if you get there before I do, you stand there at the gate. I'm on my way. Yeah. If I get there before you do, I'll be somewhere on Main Street. So you say, come on in. It's up to us to step up as God's people. Right. It's time, church, that we get back to church, we play a church, and be right. a church. That's right. It's time we put God back the head of it and that us the workers. Yeah. It's time that we, we go out. You know, going out and compelling them to come in ain't only for preachers. Ain't only for evangelists, my friend. That's part of your job, too. That's right. Well, what do you mean, preacher? When you're out on a daily-to-day -day basis, how many people do you see in a day's time? If you talk to five people in a 12-hour period, You'll talk to them about the ball game. You'll talk to them about fishing. You'll talk to them about hunting. You'll talk to them about working on cars. You'll talk to them about everything. How many times do you say, hey, do you know the Lord? How many times? But then people ask, oh, yeah, we're a child of God. Yeah. I'm a strong child yeah. of God. The Bible says I can't judge. He said, judge not, unless you be just the same judge. But it also says I can be a fruit inspector. <laughs> you don't go to an apple tree looking for an orange. That's right. You don't go to a grapefruit tree looking for a grape. That's right. So say, my friend, you are what you are. Your walk with God is just as close as you want it to be. Yeah. Right. You can get closer. Are you? It, it, so many people seem like they're to that point where they're just there, just enough. To say, if God calls me home, mm -hmm. I'm not going to hell. Yeah. I want to be closer than that, Sister Shirley. I want to be in that to the point where if if something comes up dead hours of midnight tonight and God wakes me up and says, hey, I want you to go. Yes, God, I'm going. Yeah. I want to be that close. Yeah, me too. I want to be a help. I want to be a light. To somebody else. Mm -hmm. Hey, there was an old man of God one time stood behind the pulpit and preached to me hell and preached it hot. Yeah. And Brother Donna, I had went for years, I think. I mean years. I'd even stood before Sunday school class and taught. Lost as a ghost. <clears throat> All because of a preacher one time said, repeat this prayer out of me. I don't care how many preachers come down to the altar with you. Honey, the prayer of God is going to hear is from, from the bottom of your heart. Lord, save me a sin. Yeah. That's the prayer he wants to hear. He don't hear the preacher's prayer. That's right. Exactly. I mean, now we can go to God on your behalf. Mm -hmm. A lot of people sort of approach you. The reason I didn't come down to the altar, I didn't want to tell you my problem. I don't want to know your problem. I don't. I don't have to know your problems right. to ask God to help you with them. Yeah, that's right. So see, that's why the holders don't have any more in them any more than what's in them. It ain't a preacher's business for what your business is. Mm -hmm. right. It ain't left up to him to decide whether you're, you're forgiven or not. It's up to God. Yeah. And God says, come unto me, all ye heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Yeah. David here, he had got to the point where he said, I was glad. And they said, let's go into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It just tickles me to death. On Sunday, and I was home about 1, 1, 30, 2 o'clock. It just tickles me to death to know <laughs> that Sunday night we're having a service. Yeah. Sunday morning, usually God sent me somewhere. But it seems like Sunday nights. He leaves open for me. He don't lay no word but here on my heart. As long as he does that, here's where I'll be. If that changes, I'll be the first to come and say, hey, look, God is sending me some reps yeah. Sunday night. 
But I feel there's going to be change maybe right here. I feel there's going to be people that come that wouldn't go to a church at all. But if we can get them here, we can get them saved here, yeah. they'll go to a church then, Sister Shirley. Yeah. They'll have that desire. Yeah. They'll have that change about them. They'll be like David. Mm -hmm. They'll right. be wanting to go into the house right. of the Lord. Right. So my friend, Sunday morning, Sunday nights, Wednesday night, is that your desire? To be in the house of God? To be around God's people? Is it? I can say it's mine. Right. And be truthful. But I can't answer for nobody else. I don't know why God sent the message this way. I went just as far as I can go. Or I feel the Lord wants me to go with it. But it still boils down to this. That'll take you right back to last week's message on John 3, 16, <clears throat> for God so loved the world. No greater love that can be given when we were yet still sinners that he loved enough to send his son back to the cross. You say you're a Christian? I'm going to tell you something. We stand before. He ain't, he ain't going to accept. Well, God, I, I went to sunrise. I, I went here. Lord, I went there. It ain't going to make it, Charlie. <clears throat> if the blood, just like he told the children there in Egypt. He said, you go put the blood in that old lamp post. I'll send the death angel. The death angel sees the blood. Don't see the blood on, on the door. Right, then they'll take the house. They'll take the ones in. My friend, God comes tonight. God calls you out tonight to hope and pray. The blood is what he sees. Because that's what he's looking for. That's what's going to get you and that everlasting life with you. It ain't the works you do down here. It ain't where you're a member at. It ain't the nomination. That's a man-made thing. Denomination started back years ago when the when old man of God stood up behind the pulpit, hit and preached the word, made somebody mad, stepped on somebody's toes. They went out here and started them a church and named it this. The Bible speaks in that of one church, and it says it's the church of the living God. We serve a living God. He arose that third day, Don. He tarries his coming, he's coming back. I've heard for 56 years coming back. Yeah. Charlie, he's on his way. Yeah, he's closer. Way. He's one day closer today than he was yesterday. Yeah. He'll be one day closer tomorrow than he was today. So my friend, it, it, it's high time that we get back to Christian. We get back to walking with God. Yeah. We get back and that to living the way the Bible says a Christian yeah. would live. Y'all have the message. <coughs> if you would, come to piano. Right I'll just, just go ahead. I'm just going to send the crap music. Oh, um. <clears throat> As she does this song, she does the verse of it. Like for your clothes, yeah. And search yourself out. And search If you don't think that you not where you need to be, you don't want to get up and come up here and kneel down and pray. Just kneel down before you get out. It's between you and God. I can go to God on your behalf with you. I can help. I can go to God and ask God to help with the problems you have. But it's up to you first to say, Lord, get me. Lord, put me where you want me. Lord, put me where you can use me. My, my. I'd hate to know that there was one. I could have warned and that about this place called hell. But that one looked at me and said, Well, preacher, if, if that's what it takes to get by, I'm just as well off as you, as you are. I hope and pray your daily walk with God is a walk that God's proud of. I hope and pray that your walk with, with God as a daily walk is a walk that he says, Child, I'm well pleased with 
You do your part, and God do his. So, friend, search your heart, search your soul. I ain't saying that they lost one in the house. I, I believe everyone in here at one time had been saved. I've seen trouble come upon some. I've seen some face some things. I felt for them. I, I would have faced it myself for them if I could have. I said, no. That's something they'll face. But they'll turn to me for the comfort. So my friend, God's seen you through. But are you sitting there it may not be something that's bothering you. It may just be you sitting there and God said, won't you just come thank me for what I have done for you. You know, we could get on our knees now and stay till God calls us home and never thank him enough and that for the love that he showed there in Calvary. That he showed there when he hung on that cross and he hung there with him. He said, Father, forgive him they don't know what they do. My, my, what a mighty God we serve. But friend, it's between you and God, it's up to you and 